What's cracking YouTube? It's your boy Nick here back with Big Dogs Got Eat Fantasy Football. As always, if you're new, welcome to the channel. What's going on today? We're going to get into another team outlook. I'm going all 32 teams. I've already done NFC East. I've already done the NFC West. Now we're moving to the Kings of the North, and we're going to cover the NFC North. Consists of the Packers, the Vikings, the Lions, and the Bears. The first team I'm going to get into today is the Packers. Again, we're doing one of these for every single team. If you're looking for an individual player outlook, go to my channel, type in that team, and within that video, you'll be able to hear my opinion on that player somewhere in there. Also want to say Big Dog Daddy dad hats are officially in stock, and they will be going on sale Friday at noon Eastern time. So this Friday, June 2030th, June 2030th, now June 30th, at probably noon. So if you want one, if you need a fresh dad hat for the summer, things are fire, nice leather strap back on the bike. Y'all are not here for me to sell you on anything. Y'all are here to hear some fantasy football information. That's what we're going to do. So without further ado, let's get cracking. All right, obviously we have to talk about Aaron Rodgers. I would rather not waste your time, but uh, you know, he started off a little bumpy last year, ended the last 11 games of their season on absolute fire, a 30 to three touchdown to interception ratio, finished as QB one in fantasy last year, 40 passing touchdowns on the year. Rodgers has been the starter in Green Bay for nine years now, outside of 2013, where he played in only nine games. He's never finished outside the top 10, and he's finished at, in the top two in seven of those nine. That's insanity. You can't find something more consistent at quarterback. And he enters 2017 with a really good stable of weapons, the same weapons he had last year, possibly even better, because now he has Martellus Bennett at tight end. He has a fully developed Devontae Adams, which we saw break out last year, and arguably the best pass catching back he's had in Ty Montgomery in 2017. So it's going to be another great year for, uh, for Rodgers. Him and Brady are my one and two. Obviously, I have Brady ranked ahead of Rodgers because I like Brady's weapons more, but I mean, like, I, I ain't going to be mad at you for taking either one of those guys. Right now, Rodgers is the first quarterback off the board around pick 30, 33 in that range. So his favorite weapon, Jordy Nelson, missed all of 2015 with that ACL tear. People were like, yo, Nelson's going to be shot this year. Don't draft him. Don't pick him. I wonder who said that shit. <clears throat> you know, 14 scores later, 97 catches, 1,257 receiving yards. And Jordy Nelson finds himself as wide receiver one in standard leagues, wide receiver two in PPR leagues absolute dynamite. It's entirely possible that that 14 touchdowns dips a little bit, but he's always been a proven scorer with Rodgers. Their chemistry is unmatched in terms of wide receiver quarterback. I don't know if that's a white thing. I don't know if it's just a talent thing. You tell me. Nelson did lead the NFL in red zone targets. He led the NFL in targets inside the 10 yard line. So he's a clear part of their plan. He's a clear part of Rodgers' plan. It's not like it was a spike in touchdowns because he caught a lot of long balls that he shouldn't have caught. He's getting fed those targets in there. So that touchdown total at worst should dip to like 10, double digits still. It's going right now is wide receiver seven, overall 11, 12 range. I would love to have him there. If I'm at the tail end of, of my draft in the first round, I love getting Jordy Nelson there. I have him ahead of Mike Evans in my rankings and him and AJ Green are interchangeable to me, to be honest with you. I would take Jordy Nelson probably seven or eight overall. He's being undervalued just because people are gonna keep saying he's old. Doesn't matter, he gets fed those really valuable targets in fantasy. You see last year that he still plays such a big part of this offense with the best quarterback in the NFL, arguably. So Devontae Adams is, is where things get really interesting because um, Devontae Adams was just so bad in 2015. And then last year, absolutely broke out, had a big, 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 big year. And you're like, who the fuck is this guy running routes wearing Devontae Adams' jersey? Turns out it was Devontae Adams. So when you look back at um, 2015, the year that Jordy Nelson was out, right? You assume that Cobb would slide into that wide receiver one role, and then Devonta Adams would slide into that wide receiver two role and be able to put up the type of numbers that Randall Cobb did as a wide receiver two in 2014 when Nelson was healthy, right? Didn't happen. That wasn't until 2016 when he overtook Cobb as a wide receiver two, scored 12 touchdowns, finished as wide receiver seven in standard leagues, his top 10 wide receiver in PPR leagues, just all around an incredible season for Adams. Looked really good on the field, making diving catches, great route running, just Really, really impressive stuff. So right now, Devonta Adams is going at pick number 34 overall, wide receiver 16. So here's my thing with this. I uh, There's no way in hell I see Adams repeating the numbers that he had last season. Martellus Bennett coming in with um, hopefully a renewed energy from Cobb, with Ty Montgomery playing that full-time role in the backfield seeing targets. 
Uh, you know, that touchdown total of 12 is going to regress probably somewhere in the 7 to 8 range. Uh, and what's more concerning is he had 50 or less receiving yards in 10 of the 16 games that he played in last year. For my liking, he's way too reliant on touchdowns. He's almost Last year was almost like if Dante Moncrief played a full season with all the hype and potential around him. Not good numbers in terms of yardage, not good co consistency on a wide receiver basis, but he just scored so many touchdowns. And, you know, and that... Uh, his floor is safe just being with Rodgers, and he is going to hit that seven to eight touchdown total, you know, and there is upside there, of course, because Rodgers is going to throw for 35 to 40 touchdowns. Um, I'm just not sure that it's going to repeat with Adams again. You know, you never know You never know who's going to be that real breakout guy. A couple years ago, it's James Jones, and it's Randall Cobb, and it's Devonta Adams. You know, the only consistent here is Jordy Nelson in the equation. And speaking of Randall Cobb, we'll talk about him for a sec. You know, obviously he had that dominant 2014 campaign where he played second fiddle to Jordy Nelson. Just, just a beast, right? He got that big, fat contract extension, played like an animal. Since the end of that campaign, though, Cobb's averaged under 50 receiving yards per game. And last year, he saw 37 less targets than Adams. It's a clear sign, obviously, that he's moved down the totem pole. Now, this year, Cobb's going to be the third, if not fourth option in the passing game for Rodgers, barring an injury to someone. It's worth noting that head coach Mike McCarthy recently said that, you know, he wants to get Cobb more touches this season. And he wants to get him the ball and hopefully get him back to form. But, I mean, that's just like literally coach speak. Doesn't really matter. You know, it doesn't change the fact that the Packers are just a, a weapon-heavy team. They have a lot of options. It's hard to choose who, who you think is going to be that number two guy there. It's clear to see that it's Adams right now. Cobb, is for me, is nothing less than a low-end wide receiver three with a little bit of upside. He's getting taken overall 90, uh, wide receiver 39. So, I mean, there's definitely value where he's being taken. He's right behind Eric Decker in drafts. Um, he's ahead of guys like Mike Gillisley and Jeremy Macklin. All three guys I'd rather have over Cobb. Take it for what you want. If you think Adams' this season was a fluke, I don't think it was a fluke. I do think that it will be regression, though. The value there would be in Cobb at pick 90. So now we're talking about tight ends, right? Another weapon to add to the list. Martellus Bennett moves over from the Patriots to the Packers, moves from Tom Brady to Aaron Rodgers, moves from Chick-fil-A to Chinese food, both elite options. Also, I want to take a quick second to thank our sponsors, Monster. Energy drink, y'all keep me alive, y'all keep me searching for these stats, these numbers, these these fantasy football insights. Without you guys, I would be nowhere. Even though you guys aren't really our sponsors, but it'd be cool if one day you were. Anyways, back to Martellus Bennett. Here's my thing on Martellus Bennett. I wrote about him in my free agency wide receiver, uh, free agency tight end video, which I'll link here. So last season, I was really high on Bennett going in. One of my bold predictions is actually Bennett would score more touchdowns than Gronk. It happened. It wasn't pretty, but it happened. In games that Gronk was out, you're like, oh, Bennett's going to be a beast. Wasn't the case. In games when you didn't expect him to go off, he'd score two through touchdowns. Didn't really make sense. So he signs with the Packers, three years, a little over $20 million. Um, I believe he went under the knife for some offseason ankle surgery, but he should be fine because he's been on the field with Aaron Rodgers. It's offseason and in spring and whatnot. It did look like he kind of lost a step last year. When you look at the overall numbers, they look good at the end of the season, but he didn't look as explosive. He didn't look as good as a receiver as he did in his Chicago days, obviously. My biggest concern here by far is just the lack of production that's come from the tight end position in Green Bay under Aaron Rodgers. So what I did, I went back to 2005. I know that was his rookie season and he didn't actually take over as the starter um, until like 2008, but I just want you to hear these finishes either way. Going to so the first three years was not Rodgers. This is the the top tight end on their team, what they finish in fantasy. So starting in 20, uh, 2005, tight end 24, tight end 34, tight end 10. Rodgers takes over in 2008. Tight end 21, tight end 12, tight end 39, tight end 10, tight end 13, tight end 35, tight end 26, tight end 11, tight end 35. None of them were in the, in the single digit rankings. Not a single tight end ever finished in the single digit rankings under Rodgers. A lot of 30s, a lot of 20s, 35, 39, 26, 35. And I, it just goes to show you, like the numbers don't lie, right? As much as you wanna say Bennett's probably one of the best tight ends he's had, it's just clearly not an offense that, that runs through the tight ends. And it shouldn't be when they have weapons like Jordy Nelson and Devonta Adams, and they ha they've they usually had a good backfield to work with. And I mean, I do like Bennett, but I think he's going to go a little overdrafted because people are just going to say, oh, he's with Rodgers now in Green Bay, but they're not really looking at the bigger picture. So Bennett's going around pick 100 right now, uh, tight end 12. Jack Doyle's going after him, who I would take ahead of him in a heartbeat. But besides that, I think he's, I think he's uh, about in the right spot there, besides Doyle. I think a lot of people, like I said, are just going to see Aaron Rodgers, Martellus Bennett, and, and kind of pick him in the top 10 maybe like a top eight tight end. 
I think he definitely finishes within that 12 to 14 range. So that's just my opinion on Bennett. I think he's going to be overhyped, and I think he just, I wouldn't reach for him is what I'm saying. Now's where things get a little tricky in the backfield, right? So they had a big question mark going to this season in the running back position. They took three running backs in the NFL draft, none before the fourth round. In the fourth round, they took Jamal Williams out of BYU. He's BYU's all-time leading rusher. At pick 185, they took Aaron Jones from UTEP. And at pick 238, they took Devontae Mays out of Utah State. I would say all in all, it's definitely a win for Ty Montgomery, 100%. They're not using it in a, in a heavy running back draft where there's a lot of talent on, on the top end of the draft. They didn't use any of those picks. They didn't go out in free agency and sign anyone. So I definitely think it's a it's a vote of confidence in Ty Montgomery. And Mike McCarthy insisted that Ty Montgomery is the starter there in Green Bay. So when you look at these three running backs, a lot of people are on Jamal. A lot of people are on Jamal Williams, BYU kid, really productive in college. I actually think Aaron Jones is the guy that will push Ty Mont for the most carries in the backfield. So Jamal Williams is built similar to like Christine Michael, right? Six foot, 215, like a bruiser, but he lacks really any athleticism and shake and bake to him. He had an eighth percentile spark score, really bad at the combine. Now, Aaron Jones, like I just said, is one of my favorite upside rookies. He played at UTEP, so obviously the competition was a lot lesser, uh, but he did post 6.25 yards per carry. He was the school's all-time leading rusher, 4,114 yards in just three seasons. In 2016, he had nine touchdowns alone of 40 yards or more. He has that home run play, play, play breaking, that doesn't even make sense, that play making, home run breaking, all this fucking earthquake shaking ability. I love Aaron Jones, man. Go watch some film on him, he looks good. He killed all athletic measurables at the combine. He has three down back ability in my opinion. Obviously he's got a long road to go uh, at pick 185 with Jamal Williams and Ty Montgomery likely ahead of him. But I think when all said is done, Aaron Jones will have more fantasy points than Jamal Williams. But let's talk about Ty Montgomery, the starter, right? I think his, his fantasy range of outcomes might be the widest of like any player in the NFL here. Like if, if he somehow proves to be the workhorse there, he has easy top five, top eight running back upside. But if, you know, if things start boiling down and he's only getting like eight to 10 carries, they already have all these, all these guys at wide receiver, Tymon's not really gonna catch, you know, more than three, four balls a game. So he could easily end up as, I don't even know what to call him, if that's the case, running back wide receiver 30-ish, you know? So he's obviously this wide receiver converted running back. Um, so a couple stats here. Ty Montgomery led the NFL in both yards per carry and yards after contact. 6.3 yards per carry, 5.1 yards after contact. It's a really small sample size because Montgomery only had 77 carries himself, but nonetheless, it's good to see. Uh, the question kind of becomes, can he hold up for a full season, right? And when he was when he was originally a wide receiver, he dropped weight to you know be quicker, faster at the position. Now he put on some more weight, and he's around I think 220 this off season, which actually makes him the biggest back on their roster. Now, while you think he's like a wide receiver, he's like you know small, slight, and shake and bake a lot to him. He's actually the biggest running back on their roster now, so he can probably handle the the inside carries, the goal line work, and that kind of stuff. He's the most equipped guy on the team to do so. And in terms of workload, right, uh, including the playoffs, Montgomery saw double digit touches three times. He played well in all three games. One of which was that crazy performance out in Chicago, where he ran for 162 yards, scored twice on 16 carries, and you could actually take that game out, his big big game, right? And he still averaged 5.2 yards per carry on the year. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and be stupid. I'm not naive. I don't think Ty Montgomery is going to get 20 carries a game, 25 carries a game. They're going to use some kind of committee. I just think Ty Mont can get 14, 15, 16 carries a game along with a bunch of receptions. Reports have him like working at all positions this offseason, right? He's working out of the backfields, working out of the slot, on the outside. So there should be plenty of opportunity for him to catch passes. Now he's getting picked a 44th overall, RB16. He's definitely a very high risk, but a very high reward pick there. The monster upside is is there, and they're in and off. The, you can't find a better offense to be in. And I think it's I think it's pretty clear by the fact that they didn't take a running back until the fourth round that they're not in love with any of these guys, right? So I think that said that speaks volumes about Ty Montgomery, and I think that says that he is the guy until proven otherwise. So you know what I I do like Ty Mont, and I will own shares of him this year. If I had the bet. I would say he's going to be closer to his ADP of running back 16 when all is said and done than like outside the top 25. So he, he will be on a, a bunch of my teams and I'm just intrigued by by what he has to offer because I don't think we've actually seen anyone in the league make this transition. So that's my thoughts on time off and my thoughts on the Packers. So that's going to conclude this video for you all. 
Um, as always, if you enjoyed the video, found it informational, please just scroll down a little bit, hit that thumbs up, because that's how other people find my channel. We're trying to grow here, We're trying to give you more information, and the more motivation I have from the thumbs up, the more I'll do, right? Subscribe to the channel if you're new. You can go check out my blog, which has been linked down here the entire time. You can subscribe to that. You could go follow me on Twitter, which is also down here. Everything else will be linked in the description. And I hope y'all have a wonderful 4th of July weekend, because I know your boy will. Let's get it, we're going down the shore. The Jay-Z shore. Adios.